Hi, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to terminate a quad mic cable. A quad mic cable is a cable that's got four conductors down the center instead of just two. Most mic cables have uh, three wires, two for the signal and one for the shield. A quad cable has four wires for the signal, two wires bonded together for pin two and two wires bonded together for pin three to offer some additional noise rejection and um, it's generally a higher quality cable. For short cables, it makes almost no difference whatsoever. For very long cables in high noise environments, uh, a quad cable can offer a bit more rejection. For those of you who want to terminate quad cables, I'm going to do it. So, because there's extra wires, this is more complicated and um, a little bit trickier than um, terminating a standard mic cable. So the first thing we want to do before we start any mic cable termination is to get our stuff ready. Um, I'm going to use the newer Neutrik connector, the stuff we use for our Sound Tools products. Instead of having the uh, threads on the outside of the barrel there, I'll grab one right here. Instead of having the threads on the outside with the strain relief that goes over it, it's got the threads internal to the barrel and the um, the actual external thre threads are on the strain relief. These things are great because once you load these onto the cable, you can still pull this ring off and put a label there and put clear shrink over it or buy little clear labels to snap over them. And so they can be labeled quite professionally after the fact, um, which is quite handy. Additionally, they give us a little more room to work with than the um, um, older Neutrik connectors or the other version. Because the strain relief is slightly longer um, and that's very handy for working with a quad cable. The more length you have to work with, the easier and nicer you can make it. All right, so before we get into measuring, the first thing we're gonna do is load up the cable. If I'm gonna make a mic cable, um, you really want to think ahead on everything you're going to need. So are you going to use a cable tie? Can the cable tie be added later or does it need to go on earlier? Here's a cable tie that would go on now and it's pop riveted and it can slide over the cable. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that in. And um, so we have our cable tie and that can slide to either end now. Um, second of all, do we want to have any cable labeling? Do we want to brand it with our company brand or do we want to put a length on there? Something that might not go around the surround here or um, yeah, maybe there's something we'll want later. So what I'll do for that is we will add some clear shrink. I like this very, you can get a very clear shrink. It's um, and rather than the milky stuff so you can see through it well. And we'll just put that on there. We won't shrink it on, we won't shrink it. We'll just let it sit. And then at some later date, it can be um, shrunk on with a label underneath it. All right, and the next thing we wanna do is we wanna load on our end. So we could either do it after we tin the wires or now, and I don't want to forget it, so I'm going to put it on now. Um, strain reliefs, these can go on later. They have splits in them, and they can slide onto the cable, but I'm gonna put them on now just because they're sitting around. And since these connectors are um, gender neutral, when you load this stuff on, the strain relief's the same for the male and the female, um, and the cable grip is also. So now we're fully ready to go with the two shells that can be added later, the male and the female, the male and female internals, and our cable is set up. Next in line, let's go ahead and look at strip length. So we've got our, our um, cable grip here and we can slide that up such that it lines up with the bit here. And we can see where it's grabbing into the cable is right past this um, cone shape here. It's about there. And I know that's about three quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to over strip it. We want to have a little extra length to work with. So I'm going to pull it a full inch out there and I'm going to... There we go. And we can see this is a serve shield. Now some of the quad cables, like the Canary Quad, has got a very tight um, braid shield, which will offer a lot of um, 
um, good the tight braids will offer a good amount of um, ground shielding but they're harder to work with if you do have a braid shield uh, you can either unravel it and pick through it with a not too sharp of an object and work your way until you've got it um, separated or you can poke a hole in it scrunch it down poke a hole in it and then pull the wires through the hole either way is an acceptable as long as you've got a nice even pull after you after you're done doing it and then this here we will trim out which is just a little filler piece of plastic down the middle um, the quads tend to have less filler because you because you have four wires they form a quad and it's more closer to a circle so you can kind of wrap the uh, um, so, uh, the braid or whatever around it whereas if you have two wires you kind of have these empty spaces that they put some fill in there okay the next thing we want to do and this is important when dealing with uh, um, a quad cable is to get your connector ready determine which connector you're going to put on here this is going to be a female so female I remember fridge so fridge is going to be female right ground that means the ground is going to go on this side I want blue to go to pin two. So I'm going to make sure that I pair my wires such that they're going to line up with the correct um, pins when I'm done. That way, if I don't do that, you're going to have to pull them and twist them around. So now they're, they're already in that position. So we've got blue onto pin two, pin three clear, and ground. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to strip these things and I'm going to overstrip. I'm going to strip them like a full quarter inch. Um, and let's go to the clear ones here. And the reason I want to overstrip them is I want to have some room to work with here. I don't want to, um, I want to um, be able to twist them together and not have them pop apart. And I want to make sure that the lengths are all well balanced when I'm done. And so, because I'm gonna do an overall trim. So the next thing I'll do is, now that I've got the lengths that I want, I mean, at the lengths of what, I've got everything twisted and it's in the shape, they're in the proper order to solder to the um, uh, connector, the actual connector that I'm using there. Um, I will put them in my mouth there. And we'll go ahead and hit, heat them up and see how far back. We, now we want to shrink back. We want these uh, wires to be bonded pretty well together. And I'm going to actually put a good amount of heat. You can see I'm tinning them down and I'm running the, the heat there so that it will um, get a little bit inside the insulator. I want a little bit of the solder inside the insulator. I want them a little rigid so that the weak point doesn't go to copper right at the end of the insulator and form a weak point. And then I'll take this ground and I'm going to solder the ground about a third of the way up. Um, I actually learned to solder. My dad taught me when I was a when I was a kid. But then when I worked at Hughes Aircraft, um, you know, I um, went through a soldering course and uh, you know got certified for it to. Um, solder and the soldering that um, was done there was a whole nother level everything had to be bent and hooked and wrapped and shrunk and stuff that we don't really want to do and actually they don't really do it's almost like the old tube amps when i did it when they everything was built very cumbersome okay so now let's see we've got our ends here and we've got plenty of extra um, uh, metal and we've got our shape that we want to be soldering into the cup. So next thing we want to do is trim. And ideally we want to trim all these to be the same length. So I'm going to pull them into a triangle so that they're all lined up and straight on the end of the cable. And I'm going to um, cut them all at once and have um, as close as I can to having them all balanced in length. All right, so the next thing we want to do is grab our female connector here for this one. And look at that. We sit there perfect. Okay, so this one's actually been used, but typically what you're going to want to do next is tin the connector. Um, so we'll tin the iron and get that solder wet and fresh. And nice and clean. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is lay in the ground wire and I'll grab a little solder there. Perfect. And then we'll do the, we'll just work our way right around. So I'll do this next one. And finally the blue one. Cool. All right. So we can take a look at that. All the solder cups are filled nicely. Uh, I've got a little bit of room here. It's probably more than I would normally, I would want. I can run it closer. But since we have the two wires working together and they're bonded together, we've got a really rigid connection there. It's, it's nice. And it's, um, you know, I can feel that it's gone up into the, um, insulation a little bit and we've got a nice solid pole the ground is taking a little more weight than the rest of it but it's well seated and even and clean all right so let's go ahead and slide up our strain relief and make sure that we have um, enough cable and look at that so i can see in here that the surround is ending here i mean the the cable um, the jacketing is ending here and the grips for the jacket the grips for the jacket start here and the jacket is ending here. So I've got uh, almost a quarter of an inch, um, maybe three sixteenths of an inch of cable to of jacket to grab, which is wonderful. And um, that's just a nice, simple, easy, reliable cable. We didn't shrink the individuals. Uh, we easily can. Um, but we can see what's going on and this cable will last for a good long time. Look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and do the other side of this. And um, maybe what I'll do, let's, let's start with that. So let's remember what we did. We've got our stuff loaded. We're gonna strip an inch. Pull that out. Grab all of our copper. And I'm going to pre-rig the so we want the male connector, and a male is motor. So fridge motor, we got motor male to right. So this is gonna be pin two to the right. So as I unwrap these cables, I want to make sure that the blues are going to the right. And then I'll twist up my ground wire. Cool. Um, now let's go ahead and we can lose our little friend here. Uh -huh. And we can overstrip. Uh, let's grab um, and overstrip here. Not quite getting, they're not quite the same length in here. There we go. Cool. And you know, the, the strip is not quite perfect, but that's okay. Cause the, the, the jacket will shrink back to um, where we need it to go. And having this extra copper to deal with, to twist these ends up, will make our lives easier. And then once we solder, it'll hold it together, um, hopefully. All right, so let's double check our work and make sure that we're clean and all in the right direction. We've got pin two to the right, which is correct. And it looks good to me. Everything's nice and well balanced. Let's go ahead and grab that. And solder it up. A little extra heat right by the shrink, by the jacket there to um, get some, a little bit of solder down under the jacket. And um, soldering about a third of the open length of um, ground wire. Great. Well, this one, let's go ahead and bump it up a notch. Let's add some shrink to it. Okay, so let's add an overall shrink. Let's go ahead and have that overall shrink just cover. We're not going to bust it through the connector. We'll just have it cover the um, actual joint where it, um, and it'll come down over the other bit. So let's go ahead and grab that right about there. And so I 
that on. And then let's grab these. Let's grab three of these. One, two, three. And let's start with the blue, um, blue to two. Oh, we got a trim. Let's go ahead and trim those out and bring them down to a nicer length. Cool. We don't need a lot of length on there. And tin the ends. Now we don't want to spend a lot of time with this shrink here because it's going to um, the heat here because it's going to melt the shrink. And before it now, if the shrink does melt, you can pinch it a little bit while it's still hot and open it up. So I'm going to do that and slide it over the bit. I like to slide them in earlier because um, if you don't, as you're heating up the other um, I didn't need to, I trimmed off too much of the ground. So I'm going to add a little here. I like to add the shrink early because um, the heat from the other connectors there. Okay, and now the fun one. Now this one here, when we put the shrink wrap on the ground wire, um, it's going to want to shrink. Um, down because the heat is going to travel up the wire really quick. So one of the tricks you want to do here is first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of mash the shrink down and get me some more room there and use some pliers as a heat sink to try and diffuse some of the um, to divert some of the heat from hitting the connector there. So I'm going to hold that there Get in quick and by using the pliers so by mashing the heat shrink away I'm able to gain a little more length on it and by using the pliers to hold the wire the ground wire which is going to instantly transfer heat to the shrink and shrink it down and you won't be able to slide it over the cup um, we should be able to divert that heat and end up with an unshrunk shrink wrap Let's see what happens. Let's see how, yep, and there we got it. So, looks a little crinkly, but it's okay, because once we shrink it up, it should get pretty. So let's, um, I've, these pencil um, heat guns are great. This one's a cheap one, but uh, just having a pencil, um, it really concentrates the heat where we want it. And I'm going to go ahead and squeeze these in. Now we can bring in the overall shrink that I had earlier and slide that over the tops. So what we're doing is using this as a bridge. Um, squeeze that in a little bit. Um, we're using that as a bridge to now we have no exposed wire whatsoever. Everything is completely jacketed and uh, this will offer A tremendous amount of protection in humid environment and corrosive environments if you're down by the beach or if this has got to go into something where it's going to be installed for a long time um, exposed to the elements. I'm going to shrink it a little more, feel a little soft. Um, cool. Uh, one more little bit before I seal this thing up. Um, what, the most shrink is 50% shrink and 50% shrink means that from what you start with to what you end up with, it will shrink 50%. Well, how do you know if it's going to shrink enough? And one really easy way to know do that is to take the shrink and pinch it halfway 
and then you can push it out and you can see the little opening there. That's how small this shrink should get. And then we can, so if you do about halfway, it should be about that big. So then you can actually test it. You could take a wire and say, okay, well, is it going to cover this wire here, this piece? And this one here, it's going to be borderline. This will be a little, this is a piece of shrink wrap, but um, so you can get an idea of what you're going to end up with. So 50% diameter shrink. So we can actually test that out. Now this clear stuff tends to do a little less. And let's go ahead and do this one too. So we'll grab this one. So this one here should shrink down to about there. So let's shrink them down. All right, so hot, hot, hot. Um, let's look at that. So now if I grab this piece here and we look at, it should go to about that big there. And we're a little bigger than that. It's, this clear stuff tends to be a little less than 50%. It tends to be about 40% shrink. And then we can look at this one here. Um, which should be about exactly the 50%. So there's the 50% and there's the end there. So, and that's actually a little more than 50%, but it gives you a good idea. So we're looking at the shrink to know what's going on. All right, we'll assemble this up and then we'll um, move on to another adventure. Um, cool, terminating a quad. My cable, slide that up. And there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and test the cable. So I've got a meter here set to continuity, beep, beep. And um, we will check the pins and make sure they're going to the right ones. Um, but we don't want to just check the pins. We want to check to make sure that they don't go to the wrong places as well. So that's supposed to go to pin three. We'll check the other two and the same thing here. The other two are not. And there it is. And this one here should go here and not to there. Um, but what it doesn't help us check is whether or not there's a loose connection. Maybe it's connecting because I'm holding in a certain way. Um, and also it's kind of slow. Uh, this sound tool sniffer sender unit is a remote end tester. I actually designed it and uh, we make it in the sound tools division and three green LEDs plus the green LED on the um, Sender means it's all good. And this checks every possible fault, any short that could possibly happen, any opens that happen. And we get the ability to wiggle this around and make sure that nothing is intermittent. Um, it's also cool because you can check cable since it's not like a lot of testers out there. You don't have to have both ends of the cable in the same spot. You can check stuff that's installed. All right, I've fixed one of the many cables I took apart for this video series. <laughs> And um, I got more to come. Cool, cool. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll do more soon. Awesome. So thank you for hanging out. And I hope you found this video and others that I do interesting and informative. And check out soundtools.com. Take a look at the products that I personally designed, some solutions for the pro audio industry, uh, analog over Cat5, a bunch of testers, um, and other useful tools. Um, ratsound.com has got our sales department, rental department, install department. Uh, we sell a wide variety of pro audio and AV gear. We do installations, small to large, and we do rentals for everything as small as local clubs and backyard parties, all the way up to Coachella Festival and artists like Pearl Jam, Jack Johnson, Blink-182. And Thanks for hanging out.